Hi, welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing something that I'm very excited about, and it is a Voron 0.2 kit. And this isn't just an ordinary kit. It actually comes with a lot of things, and in fact, it comes with everything that you should need, including the printed parts to build your Voron 0.2. And this kit, like many of the Voron 0.2 kits, is manufactured and produced in China. And it's a company by the name of Cybor. And I have never actually built a cyborg kit before, so this will be my first one. I know they have been around for a little while now. Uh, they have several other kits as well. Someone in the community had reached out to me and they've been working with this company. One of the big benefits of this kit is that it's $469 all in. My first Voron was around $750 and that didn't even include everything. To come in at $469 shipped with everything you need, that is a pretty darn good price point. I'm going to go ahead and unbox this, and you're going to see it in real time. Go ahead and uh, get this box open first. It's taped really well. And I believe that they are going to be updating the packaging. What you see may be a little bit different, and there may be some changes too to the kit after the reviews. So this is technically a, a review unit. we got some foam in here. And it looks like a QR code. I've already joined their Discord. Oh, this is nice. So we've got a wiring diagram. Wow, look at this, look at these parts. So I was curious how these parts would look and I can say that they look pretty good. It looks like they print these on a textured plate. Um, the parts are somewhat assembled here on the mini stealth burner. Yeah, that looks like it fits well. Here's the piece where the belts go on. And the little back for the tool head. These are pretty handy. These are for um, the bed. So they do. it looks like they do include some of the tools that are recommended. I think I'm just going to leave these in here and just take out a few parts just so I don't lose everything. Oh, here's the jig too. Oh, cool. It's even got like a little washer in there. Here's the AB drives. Yeah, those look nice. My understanding is that this is eSun ABS, and I actually did buy a couple rolls just in case I need to reprint anything or print different parts later down the road. So eSun ABS Plus, it's not bad. It's definitely a good budget ABS filament. I usually typically will use Fusion ABS or Polymaker ASA in the past. I don't see any warping on these parts, which is good. Maybe a tiny bit of elephant's foot, but that's not bad. Just very tiny. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any issues with the extrusion. Initially, I was thinking maybe the top layer is a little over extruded, but I think it looks good. So I'll keep moving on. Next up, we've got some more parts. And it looks like the skirts are here. Yeah, these, these are usually pretty tough parts to print. They look really good. Everything is nice and uh, nice and filled in. I don't see any holes or, or spots here. Sometimes you'll see that. Yeah, no warping. Looks nice and flat. And now we've got the extrusions. I am curious how these look, but yeah, they look great. Um, they are tapped. The taps look pretty clean. And I'll, I'll be double checking everything with the extrusion links. And then here are the parts for the bed. So those look good as well. I imagine the top hat parts are in here too. So I think all the extrusion is probably in here. There might be another sheet with it. What I do like, I really like these trays. This is really nice, nice and organized. We've also got, it's like parts for the screen here. And here's all the panel clips. And next up, oh, this is cool. I'm not sure what it is. Let's take, take a look. Oh, nice, this is the hot end. So I understand this is a type of CHT. So it's basically like a, kind of like a Revo clone, I believe. Um, it's got a hot end sock on it. I, I do not have any experience with this hot end, but I do know that it's similar, I think, to the Dragon. And it even uses the same mounting holes as the Dragon hot end. And in terms of flow rate, I believe you can expect that. I plan on doing some benchmarking on that. I also believe this is a V6 nozzle. This should come off. Yep. That wasn't hard. And you can see a little bit more of a close-up there. 
these are starting to gain popularity, of course, with the Revo. And then we've got a Voron Zero display, and it looks like it's got the USB connection. So I know there's a simple display and there's this full uh, V0 display, and this is the full V0 display. You do have to flash clipper to it, but it's a good display. It's like a USB cable here, and that's for the display. Also got our fans. Ah, never heard of this brand, 3D Geek Station. Uh, we've got two cooling fans, and then we've also got just an unbranded generic fan here, and these are 24 volts. So these are you're gonna use one of these on your hot end, and one of these for the um, the bottom. Hey, as long as they spin and cool, we're in good shape, and I, I think they will. It looks like we've got an ADXL 345 here. This is great. So this is what you're gonna use for input shaper. If you want to tune your calibrate your printer so you get rid of the ringing and ghosting and i'm not sure what this is so it might be the wi-fi uh chip so we've got a Voron 0.2 fastener kit nice and organized it looks like it's got the bearings the heat inserts all the screws you're going to need so i'll go ahead and open that up oh cool and it's even got all the, the bomb right up here so you know where to reach and grab that's really nice that's going to make finding screws very easy I know in the past when I've done bills, you've probably seen me where I have a bunch of bags laying around. So sometimes th this is going to be really handy because f just finding bags can be a chore. So I like how they did that. It's a great idea. We've got a loom here, and it looks like it's a split loom, which is my favorite kind. So all of your wires from your tool head to the back to the uh, back of the, to the control board will go through this. And we've got some pre-crimped wires here. And this looks like it's gonna connect probably to the power supply. So I like how they've already got the terminals on here. Uh, we've got some end stops. I'm guessing that's for the Z because you don't need them on the X and Y anymore. And that's a motor cable. We've got some belts. Let's see if we can identify the belt. So it does appear to be a Gates belt, which is good. A Gates Power Grip GT, which is what you want. TFE tube. Oh, this is kind of cute. It's a little uh, 24 volt, 60 watt DC bed. It also appears to have a fuse already wired in, which is a nice perk. Um, it's got the wires pre crimp I know I'm used to seeing maybe a different kind of connector, but I'm also used to using a different kind of board. So here's the thermistor. So we've got the magnetic sheet. Looks like it's a 3M version, which is good. We've got PEI on one side and textured on the other. And then we've also got, it looks like a fairly fairly thick aluminum bed here. And it looks like it's been pre-drilled and countersunk. And yeah, that's what I would expect. It looks about as thick as the normal beds would be. I'm gonna measure it real quick. Yeah, so six millimeters, right on point. And then in this section, it's gonna be our control board with some different pins. And I'm not used to whatever this is, but I will definitely be looking into it. And then here is the, I believe it's a Gemini Fly version three, I think. So I, I've never used this board before, but it does have kind of the equivalent of a Raspberry Pi on board. And it also has, of course, the printer MCU. And it looks like all of the drivers are pre-installed, even with the heat sinks. And it's got the, I can see a lot of the different connectors here. Those appear to be JST. Probably XH, they look bigger. And then we've also got USB and an Ethernet port. Everything we're, we're gonna need for the control board and Pi is already here. This, that'll be new for me because I've always gone Raspberry Pi. And then we've got some some motors here. And these are branded Cbor or Cybor. So uh, <clears throat> hopefully we can find the specs on those because we'll need to. And then we've also got a pancake stepper, and this is a Moons, Genuine Moons. That's nice. That's a good quality motor. And it looks like we also have the anti-backlash nut. We've got the Z motor here, and this is MocoTech. have not heard of them, but it looks like it's going to be perfectly cable, capable. And then we've got a couple of these motor pulleys, and they look pretty decent. Don't see any issues there. There are so many trays here. It's the kit that never ends. I love it. Now, it looks like we've got the rest of the extrusions here. I was kind of wondering where those were. And I'm not even going to take that out yet. Oh, this is nice. 
So not only do you get a couple of Allen keys, you also get actual screwdrivers. So that's really cool. I've never seen that in a kit before. And there's a Phillips head here, and there's also, it looks like there may be M2, M2.5 uh, screwdrivers. I'll have to confirm that. And a pre-wired AC inlet. And I'm assuming the fuses are probably already in there, but I'll double check that later. Looks like a nice quality one. I'm not used to seeing red, black, and yellow, but the colors don't matter. It looks like the wires are decent gauge. And now we've got the power supply. And I know this is not a mean well like you might find in some of the other kits, but it is a Mortensen. They're sold on DigiKey, so I assume they're pretty decent. And of course it's set to 230. Since I'm in the US, I'm gonna go ahead and change that now before I, so I don't forget. So it's a 115. It says it's a LM220B224R2. So I'm assuming that's 200 watt and 24 volt. It looks like there are four, well, two pairs of uh, DC24, and then you've got your typical line neutral and earth for AC. And you do have a potentiometer here as well if you want to adjust the, the voltage output. Looks like a good power supply. Looking inside, it looks fairly high quality too. And now there's a yellow envelope in here. I'm not sure what this is, but I'll go ahead and open it. Looks like it's glued pretty good. Ah, the rails, nice. Okay, these are branded Cybor MGN 7H. So these look like nice quality rails. I'll have to get them out before I can really tell, but I'll slide them back and forth and make sure that they look good. There's definitely some oil on here as well, which is good. You're gonna to wanna to probably soak those and clean them off before you install them, which is very typical. And we've got the last tray. I'll just move it over because I don't wanna take it out. But this looks like it's, uh, so you've got VHB tape. You've got all your acrylic panels for both the top hat and the sides and the back. And then you've got some more PTFE tube. And your cable chain, there's looks like there's more than enough there. And some zip ties. Well, so far so good. I will say my initial impression of this kit is that for 469, I think there's an awful lot packed in there and in a good way, right? My understanding is that the V0.1 kit may not have been a home run. Cyborg has listened to community feedback and incorporated that into this new V0.2 kit. Just looking at the kit, I like how everything is organized into trays. I like the quality of the parts. They seem to be totally usable. Are there higher quality parts that you can get with PIF? Uh, maybe, you know, I, I would say these are right up there with what I would consider a, a quality part. And I'll, I'll find out more when I go to put them together. That's gonna be the real test. As far as all the other parts, the, there's certainly different brand names and things that are maybe unbranded even. So I think the question is going to be, are these parts going to be good enough at this budget point? Time will tell. Once I get the build together, I think I'll be able to put this through the paces and see. So please stay tuned. I'm going to be publishing a few different videos on this build. I won't be going step by step, but if you do want to learn how to build a Voron 0.2, please feel free to go to my Voron 0.2 build series. A lot of the, those steps are going to be the same. Now I do plan on covering some highlights of the build and just talking about some of the differences. So thanks again for watching. Please feel free to leave a question or comment and I will continue to get this footage out and hopefully help you make a decision if this kit is right for you.